Hello and welcome to Thursday's live Craft Star Hangout. I hope you've all had a great week. Um, we do these hangouts, if you've been with the Craft Star for a while, uh, two to three times a week, sometimes more. Um, and we're going to be wrapping them up even more in the coming weeks because we're starting live sales next week, which is very exciting, a completely new thing for our sector uh, where our sellers get to go come on live and sell their items because we believe that moving pictures sells a lot better than a still image sitting on a website. So it's a new area and it's all very exciting. So we've been using this Hangout technology, which is part of Google Plus, for months now. And um, I've only been using it as a tool because it was much simpler than what we were using before, which was a much more complex broadcasting system. Um, and didn't really pay much attention to the whole Google Plus side. And then we read somewhere, the team, that we should have a Google Plus account. So we started the Google Plus account and we started posting items on it. And I started seeing that those items that were getting posted and were getting attention were getting front page, um, front page views on the Google searches. And so I'm thinking, okay, something's going on here. I don't know enough about all this stuff to understand why, and that's, but that's why I've been telling you all for the last few weeks, get a Google Plus account. Well, tonight we have got the guru of Google Plus here to join us to explain how all this is working. And his name is Ben Fisher, and he's right here. How are you, Ben? Hi, Bethan. How are you doing? Nice um, to see you again. Nice to Hi, see you. Everybody out there. <laughs> <laughs> In Craft Star Land. Thank you ever so much for joining us. Um, I'll come back to you in just a second. Um, so we did some sleuthing, okay. and we realized there was a correlation here, obviously. And we put out a message in the Google Plus communities, which is a whole other part of this wondrous, amazing, magical world. Um, and Ben actually answered and said, yes, he would love to come on and explain Google Plus. So that's why we're here. Um, we're very, very lucky to have him. He is a big player in the scene, and he knows his stuff. And what um, I have to thank him for abs having absolutely no sleep since last Saturday when I first met him, because it's like I've got a new addiction. It's so complex and so clever and so uh, engaging that once you get the hang of Google+, Plus and what it's all about, and what the difference is between Facebook, which is one of the biggest questions we get, keep getting answered, you're going to get sucked in, and you're going to see how amazing it is for your small business. So we're aiming this whole conversation at Craft Star small business owners as you having your own Google Plus page, and Ben is here to talk about the ABCs. Uh, it would take us weeks to go through even what the tiny bit I've learned so far. So um, hopefully if we pull this off and we're nice enough to Ben, he'll come back again and we can go deeper and deeper. Uh, but tonight it's just uh, about the ABCs. Um, and I think where I would really love to start is the, I, with the, your background, I guess, Ben, give us, an, sure. give us a, a little story about who you are and why you are the guru. All right. Well, I'll try and give you the the thirty second pitch. No, um, basically, I started out my in nineteen ninety four helping out small businesses up in a little town of Flagstaff, Arizona, and uh, working with hundreds of different niches. You know, everything from bed and breakfast to real estate companies to like the Chamber of Commerce, and teaching people basically entrepreneurs. Um, you know, how to marry online, offline, and basically promote their businesses. And been doing SEO and internet marketing ever since then, so I guess you'd say about 15 years of experience in helping SMBs get online. Well, that's perfect um, for us because not only do you understand this Google Plus platform, but you also understand the small business world. The Craft Star is all about small business. We're one. We host over 2,500 of them. Um, and part of our promise to them is to do whatever we can to help them build their businesses and these kind of broadcasts are those things and you are going to help them do that. <laughs> You're, it's a guarantee, money back guarantee. <laughs> and to, put, to put some icing on the cake and kind of a little carrot to tease everybody, um, we actually at State of Demand we have a customer called the Silver Diva, Carissa Barbie is the owner of that and she makes handmade custom jewelry and um, we've got a 
wonderful, basically, case study that we've done to kind of explain to everybody in real terms um, how Google Plus can help your business. Okay, fantastic. And I think that kind of thing and some of the other things that we'll talk about at the end are teasers to maybe next time that we can talk you into coming back on because there's just so much to learn. Um, I'd like to start, P oh, by the way, uh, if, if you're watching, uh, please feel free to send in questions. Uh, this is a great opportunity to grab some insight from a guy who really knows what he's talking about. Um, and uh, we will be taking the questions and answers. If it works right, I can see them on the screen, and I'll be sending them through to Ben as they come along. Um, OK, Ben, the first question I get asked the most is, what is the, actually, what I want, let me take a step back. Um, you have told me, which I have found fascinating, uh, a bit about the, the principles and philosophy of Google. And um, I think that will really resonate with our people. Can you, can you just kind of sum that up? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, basically I break it down into a word that I think uh, everybody here on the Craft Star Network is going to really relate to, and that is sketch, uh, S-K-E-T-C-H. And that's basically sharing what you like, being knowledgeable, sharing your expertise and being a thought leader, being thankful, and be caring, and be helpful. Those are the things that make Google Plus so different than any other social network that's out there. Um, you know, I mean, I'll, let's get into some stats just really quick so people understand also just kind of the, the size of Google. And Google Plus is now the second largest network next to Facebook. Uh, it's an excess of over 1 billion accounts. Of those, about 340 of them are active on a monthly basis. That's compared to about 700 million accounts that are on Facebook. Um, the thing that's really amazing about that is, is that the time that those accounts have become active, that's all basically only been in the past two years. Wow. Um, Facebook, yeah, Facebook's been doing this, trying to do this for a lot longer. Okay, so one of the things that really uh, got me was the karma wheel um, that you put in what, no, you get out what you put in. Um, I love that because that's kind of what we've built the, the principle of the craft store about. So um, I was really surprised mm -hmm. to hear that a company as big as Google actually cared about something like that. <laughs> well, I think it's actually more in part thanks to the people that are on Google+. Plus. Um, the people on G Plus are just awesome. I mean, they really love to share their expertise. They love to help people out. And they realize that, and we'll probably be saying this quite a few times, you can't always be selling on Google Plus. You can't go by the ABS rule. You got to be able to help people share your expertise, share your knowledge, and really actually care about the results. You know, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we met the Craft Star in the first place is because, you know, we saw there was a need, and so we reached out and wasn't expecting any kind of business out of it. It was just like, okay, great, cool, how can I help you? And, um, and you're right, the karma wheel totally goes round and round in Google+. People that see that you are a human being that actually cares about other people want you to be successful. And that want for you to be successful ends up potentially turning into business for yourself in one way or another, however you define business. I have to say that since I've uh, talked to you last Saturday and have been on it pretty much nonstop, I've not come across such a welcoming, helpful, lovely bunch of people that really do seem to have your best interests at heart. It's, it's an amazing community. And communities aren't something we're really even going to touch on today. That's maybe next week or whenever we can get them back. But it's incredible what it achieves. Um, I think uh, so that was going back to get a little bit of the, the basis of the whole karma thing and that it's not – this, is, I think, is a good opportunity to explain the difference between uh, Facebook and Google+. Plus. Sure. I mean, really, I think when it comes down to it is, is that, that Facebook is for friends and family. Um, it's a place where you're going to relate to your friends and your family. You're going to, some people do do business on Facebook, you know, because those people are their friends. Um, but when it comes down to, like, selling an item like jewelry or any really any kind of uh, other types of items, it takes a real long time to make a sale. Um, when you look at something like Twitter, um, and I'll, I guess let me back up on that really quick. So Facebook is kind of more like a 
closed type of uh, community, I guess you could say, and more of a close personal friends and family. Twitter, it's like a bullhorn. Every single thing that you do on Twitter is you're blasting it out in public. Um, it could be a great traffic generator. But you know, when it comes to Google Plus, the the beauty of Google Plus is actually in its complexity and in its simplicity, and that is is that the Google social layer lays atop all of the Google products. The most important of those of those products being Google.com itself, where most of the searches happen on the internet. And so when we're talking about that is any kind of activity that you do within Google Plus ends up everywhere. It ends up on YouTube. It ends up in search. When we're looking at search, if it's local, you get this nice space of real estate on the Google results page. Um, images, beautiful images are inside of Google Plus end up in Google image search. Same thing with video. Video also ends up uh, in Google search as well. So you kind of have this one nice point of entry that can spread your message everywhere where people are searching. We, you, you've brought up local a few times and I haven't actually taken it on board until just now because as an e-commerce site there, there isn't a lo location for it. Um, but should our sellers on Google Plus be putting their location on it, even though they don't have a bricks and mortar store, it is an e-commerce store. Is locality that important? Well, local search is very important. Um, but the distinction between the business brand page that you have on Google Plus uh, is also very important. There are advantages to having local, like showing up on maps, for instance, getting that much more real estate. Um, but you have to put in a physical address, and you have to verify that address. So if you put that address as your home or your apartment number, you can expect people to look, be looking for you and coming to your home or your apartment. So it's probably not advisable okay. to do that. You answered the question. Thank you very much. It just went through my head that maybe we're missing a trick. No, we don't want these people knocking on the doors. Um, okay, so for a small business on the Craft Star, um, who spends a lot of time, uh, we push the 70-30 rule. 70% 70 of your time is either creating, if you're a handmaker, or curating, if you are a vintage seller or a hand, um, a crafting supply seller. So we sell all three categories. So 30% um, of the time we push as promoting whatever you've curated or created. And those have been traditionally Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, um, as the main ones. How can Google Plus help in that realm, and how important is it against those other three players? Well, I mean, I, I guess if I had to kind of prioritize them for, for the crafter, craft star, the craft star community, um, I would say it's probably all about imagery more than anything else. It is about pictures. So Pinterest is a, is an awesome demographic for. Um, for the craft star users, I'm sorry, uh, stores. Google Plus is all about beauty, uh, beauty, imagery, and simplicity as well. So that's another place. Like if you go in <clears throat> to the communities on Google Plus, you'll find a ton of crafting communities and photography communities and web designer communities. So people are very visually oriented when it comes to Google Plus. Um, and we see this when we're doing posts. The posts that get some of the best engagement are posts that but I have a nice, big, high-definition picture. Um, so, I mean, I, I would say that efforts, like, for instance, again, Twitter is a big bullhorn, and you can get into Twitter, and you can waste a lot of time on Twitter. It, Twitter is great for people. But I would prioritize it more along the lines of get involved in Google+, get involved with Pinterest. If you really want to try and stretch your legs, maybe try Facebook. But, you know, it, it depends on your experience, really. Okay, so one of the reasons why we're even here is because I, I noticed that the posts we were putting on Google Plus that were getting attention were getting front page uh, search results. So, oh, you know what? I just thought of one last thing. I'm sorry. Just, just to go back to your previous question. Yeah. I was reading this awesome post last night that somebody wrote about um, basically using a rifle versus a shotgun in social media. Okay. Uh, a rifle being 
a high precision, a precision weapon, right, versus mm -hmm. a shotgun, which shoots everything everywhere. So, but the article was really all about focus. Um, and so, can do you use a shotgun approach, which is go after Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, Google Plus, or do you use a rifle and become an expert, basically, on the platform that you're on? And and my suggestion is is become an expert on a platform. And if you, for instance, if you say your platform of choice is going to be Google Plus because of the awesome people and the knowledge sharing, then do that. Be an expert, and you'll definitely reap the rewards, just like the car mobile. Sorry. Go. Oh, okay, so leading on from that, the question from our sellers is going to be, but what is the audience on Google Plus compared to the likes of Facebook? Um, again, Facebook is more friends and family. It's not really geared towards driving a lot of sales, whereas Google Plus is more geared towards being a thought leader, knowledgeable, more being an expert, and people are more likely to buy from somebody who's really knowledgeable and expert and helpful versus somebody it's just for friends and family. That makes a lot of sense, and we'll get into that's got a lot to do with how you build your posts and what you, what they should contain, how long they are, blah blah blah. But we'll go into that in a bit later. Um, but I'd like to go back to what I just said about uh, noticing that what we were posting on Google Plus that was getting attention were, was getting front page results on Google Search. How we're cutting out the middleman here? Is that what it is? Yeah, in a sense you are. Um, basically, uh, it kind of goes back to what we were saying a little bit earlier, and that is that everything that happens on Google Plus ends up all over the Google products. So, and most important of that being Google Search. So, um, yeah, so in a sense you are cutting out the middleman. You're also the, the, the beauty of, I mean, and this has kind of always been the beauty of Google in general, Google Search, is that it gives a, such an even playing field um, for small businesses and gives you the ability to really compete with the big boys. And right now, a lot of the big boys aren't concentrating on Google+. And this gives small businesses such an advantage at this point. The big guys don't feel like they have to do Google+. But they feel like they'll get a following and it'll just kind of come. Um, you know, we uh, uh, Actually, there was a, a client, Archways Ceilings, I believe, uh, and Doors. On Google Plus, and there was this recent kind of uh, testing that we did from um, a group called SEO Wise did, and it's one of uh, Stefan's customers, um, and you know they were right there up against their largest competitor, and their page outranked their largest competitor's page, which is a huge brick and mortar store. So it's proof positive that a small business can really compete with their largest competitors just by taking advantage of one platform. But by taking advantage of it in the proper way and it's not yeah. just the bullhorn and we'll get into what what is the proper way. It's a question that's come through from a couple people. Lynn, um, Angel, thank you very much. Rhonda, uh, what is the perfect uh, post? So uh, I think now would be a good opportunity, which I hate doing this part in the Hangouts, is sharing my screen and going to the Craftstar Google Plus page. So um, we can take a look at the uh, architecture of it. I don't understand what some of the pluses and blah blahs and things mean. So um, if you don't mind, um, I'd like to head over there, share the page, and you can talk us through as from the top down. Is that okay? Let's do it. Okay. I, I warn you, everyone knows I hate screen share on this thing. It scares me to death. Um, but we're going for it. So please let me know, everybody, if my screen share is working. Okay, we're on actually the Craftstar page. We don't want to be there. We want to be on Craftstar Google Plus page. Okay, um, if this isn't working, girls, please text me. Okay, so we're on the. Can you see this, Ben? Yep. Okay, so we're on the Google. We're on the Craftstar's Google Plus page. My first question is, <laughs> what's up with this big image? <laughs> uh, that big image. You know, that thing, I believe, is uh, what, uh, I forget the exact number of pixels, but it's like 2,500 by 2,500 pixels, I believe. Uh, it's big, obviously. So they increased the size of that early this year. Uh, it used to be a thinner kind of strip. And the, the main reason for the, the increase in the size is, A, it gives some really great kind of um, 
creative usability aspects to it. So like for instance, you know, you could have individual tiles on there that show off different pieces of say jewelry or vintage items uh, or necklaces. You can even animate it actually, which is really cool. Oh. Uh, so you're moving pictures. Yeah, you probably didn't know that one, huh? Oh, oh. <laughs> now yeah. you're talking. So, so it's, it's a really nice large piece of real estate uh, that you can get very creative with. The other thing that's kind of cool about it too is, is that, um, and again, this comes back to, to beauty um, and simplicity. Is ben, that, hold on a second, please. My screen share apparent, attempt apparently has not worked. Um, I tell you, I can't get this right for the life of me. Okay, so I'm going to... It's working for me. Um, let me get on me... Okay. I think uh, infinite windows. There we go. That should right. be working. Okay. Um, okay. okay. So, <laughs> so we're back to the big image on the Google Plus page. Yeah. So basically, I mean, really, what it comes down to, though, is beyond beyond all of that, is that um, you know, I, I think that Google wants everybody to have kind of a unified experience across all platforms, whether we're talking about mobile devices on a desktop with different ty types of different sizes of uh, monitors, to maybe you never know. I mean, Google TV. So uh, a nice big image kind of fits that whole thing, and it resizes. It's very. Re it's called what's responsive design, basically. So no matter what device you're looking at, it it fits the the image. Exactly. Okay. Right, great. and the only way you can do that is by going big. <laughs> by going big, go big or go home. Yep. Okay. So uh, <laughs> let's start with this big red button. Follow. What do we do? Okay. So well, follow is pretty much basically going to uh, enter you into. It's going. I'm sorry. You're going to be able to put the craft star into one of your circles. Um, we'll probably get into circles much more in depth in a in a later session. But circles is kind of a way of curating things that you're interested in. So, for instance, if you go to follow. Uh, you know, you might have, well, you see following friends, family, acquaintances, or you can create a new circle. So let's just say that for grins and giggles, wow, you might be into crafting. So you might create a new circle that's called awesome crafting people or awesome crafting brands. And that now you'd put the craft star into these awesome crafting brands or maybe crafting thought leaders. Um, and the reason for that is, is that you can really control the messages that you see on Google Plus by going and looking at streams of, uh, basically streams within a circle. So let's just say you followed maybe 15 brands that you really love. Um, uh, and then basically what would happen is, is you would only see posts from those people that are within that circle. Another aspect of the circle is, is that you can also send a targeted message just to people in that circle. Again, we're trying to cut down the noise as much as possible. So, <clears throat> so yeah, that's kind of the basics behind the follow button and circles. Okay, and what does this number signify? Uh, that number signifies the total number of pluses on the page. So, so people that like us? Uh, people that are basically recommending you in a sense. The, the plus one acts as a recommendation or an endorsement type of uh, engine, I guess you could say. Okay. So if somebody plus one's a page, they're endorsing and there's a, like a like on Facebook. It's, it behaves differently mechanically wise, but it, that's the best way to explain it. Um, yeah, it's an okay. endorsement. <laughs> Excellent. So you want that a good number. Um, okay. Right. Now, I'm looking at this as a viewer would rather than as if I own the page. Um, so right here we've got um, people, so I'm looking at it as my personal page, I beg your pardon. So people that, that the craft store has in common with my personal page and people that were in the same circles. Um, and then it also gives you options to, or gives you, uh, um, I can't think of a word, uh, options of people to follow that are similar to you in thought. Is that what they're, how, how are they offering you these people? 
Well, no, actually, uh, these are the 790 people. These are 790 people that you have actually followed as the craft star. Okay. So, uh, so basically, it's just showing those people. And yes, basically, based on your uh, personal preferences and other people that you follow, the correct people might show up in this in their circles. Um, then there's the in common with you. And these are people that, you know, say I have circled and you have circled and, you know, and so these are the people that we have in common. So it's very much like a relationship, basically. Um, builds a little bit more trust. And then there's the have them in circles. And these are the number of people that have actually gone ahead and done the whole follow button up at the top of the page. So those are the number of people who have actually gone ahead and done the follow and put you into a circle. Okay, so if you are a craft star seller, you need to be following us, basically. Exactly. <laughs> is that, is that, yeah, that's the bottom uh, line. <laughs> I, I like, click over, uh, put your mouse over, follow, and put in some people to, that I really want to pay attention to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't seen this page because we're actually logged in as my personal page looking at the craft star as an outsider and I've always looked at it as a craft star insider. So what's this build your following on Google Plus? Uh, that's basically if you wanted to go ahead and create a brand new business page. So if you wanted to create a local page or if you wanted to create another brand page. And what are the kind of parameters of that? Do you want a personal page and a business page, or should you focus on one? Um, well, there's many different lines of thoughts on that, and we should probably get into that and have a whole other hangout just around that topic. Okay. But to kind of spitball it, I mean, some people have personal brands, and a lot of people have business brands. It all depends on kind of what your objectives are on the platform um, and how you want to position yourself. So let's just say that if you're a business, you should probably have a business page and that should be connected to your website. Uh, you should also have a personal profile that interacts with people as well. Okay, excellent. Um, so I think at this point would be good. Um, I'm sorry I'm away from the screen with the question and answers, but building the perfect post. Um, okay. And I think there are a few facets of this that um, I think would be interesting to people. So you create a post, um, which I can't do on here. Um, <laughs> should I go to my page? How do I don't even know how to do that from here. Um, no, I That's can't. Okay. We, we, I can't. We, can just, we can just take a look at individual posts. Okay. Uh, like that first one that you got right there. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. okay. So basically, um, I mean, first thing I want to do is I want to put a huge hat tip out there, Dustin W. Stout, uh, on Google+. Plus. Definitely Google him, search him. Uh, you can find him at dustn.tv. And uh, he put together an awesome post that goes over basically the anatomy of a perfect post on Google+. Oh. Um, but, so we'll, but we'll just go over some of the basics here right now. <clears throat> so basically when you're putting together a, uh, a post on, on G+, there's a couple different ways that you want to go about it. The one, for instance, the, the one that you have on the left, you know, we call that an image post. And it's actually crafted very well, by the way. Um, there are some things though, that you could do to, to really kind of improve it. Uh, the okay. first thing oh. is is that you want to have a minimum, uh, we suggest at least, a minimum of 50 characters on the post itself uh, when we're talking about as far as words go. So it wow. says, you know, fabulous tea towels from, you know, plus epic linen. So in this case, you'd want to kind of expand on that a little bit more and the reason for this is, is you, won't, you don't want to mislead people, basically. You want to tell people why they should even be clicking on this link. What's this picture all about? Give some actual insight. That kind of goes back to, again, being insightful and being an expert. Um, so, you know, at least, you know, at least 50 characters. You know, if you can make that even into, you know, a paragraph of text, that's even better. You know, the, the one thing you don't want to do on Google Plus is waste people's time. Um, and every click is, it can be considered either great or a waste of time. So it's nice to explain why people are, 
or should even be clicking on something or doing anything with the post. So if we had if we had crafted this to say um, these fabulous tea towels from and by the way when you plus Epic Linen that's the seller of this item so right. they get notified that we've posted about them is that correct? Oh, that's absolutely correct. They Excellent. get it right in their little uh, Mr. Jingles. Wonderful. Okay, so if we had crafted this saying something like, fabulous tea towels from Epic Linen, um, a vintage feel that bike lovers, bike riders, uh, um, crafty kitchens would love a great Christmas gift for those hard to buy. Would something like that be okay for us as sure, an e-commerce site? Yeah, something like that would be really great. I mean, and if you had any other kind of in-depth or details about it, uh, you know, like it's hand-stitched or, you know, that uh, this awesome, th you know, this uh, awesome tea towel took, you know, 30 hours to create, um, you know, any other kind of details really help. Basically. Okay, so Craft Star Sellers, this is really interesting and absolutely fabulous because you've already done this work. On all your listings, you have that uh, description. So take some of that, take the most important points of that, and use it in your listings on Google+. Plus. Um, right. One thing I would warn... What I would warn there, though, is, is the the uh, natural inclination there is to just copy and paste. Don't. You know, copy it from the site and paste it into a post. Don't do that. Make it original. Okay. So as long as they, I guess what I'm trying to say is they've got the basic information there. Use that, recraft it, make a new post. But it's you. You don't have to do the work because you've already basically done it. You're just rewriting it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Wonderful. Um, now hashtags. How important are hashtags? And is there an average amount you should have per post? Actually, there's one thing I'd like to back up on before we get into the hashtags, and that is is the big long URL that you have mm -hmm. right under after Epic Linen. Uh, that can actually be shortened um, using something like a you know a uh, bit.ly uh, bit bit .ly, mm -hmm. or even uh, the goo.gl, which is Google's own shortener. Um, so we'll talk about social signals at another time, but social signals will still pass through a shortened URL, and it's kind of along the lines of you know that big URL is kind of long to to look at. Uh, a shortened URL is shorted down to that much, you know, so it's really it won't take us up as much real estate basically. Very interesting. Okay, that's something I should talk to the techs about too then. Um, <laughs> Yeah, fascinating. Uh, okay, thank you for that. Uh, by the way, you guys, um, this is a lot to take in. Um, even I've spent hours now on the phone in sessions with Ben on learning as he's talking right now. We will do a summary of this. Uh, we will post the uh, recorded version of this onto our Google Plus page and Facebook and Twitter. Um, and we'll also do the kind of key points that we've hit on here so that you can get the perfect post. I'd love a link to that. Do you have a link to the um, the guy that you were talking about earlier, Ben, that you could send me? Um, I can send it to you later. I don't have it with me right now. <laughs> cool. Excellent. Great. No, it would be just wonderful for me to be able to do a summary of this and be able to include uh, knowledgeable content. Um, okay, so for the hashtags, mm -hmm. uh, is there a minimum amount, a maximum amount? What are we getting out of these hashtags? Recommend a minimum of one. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> uh, a maximum amount. I mean, uh, you know, use your best judgment. I guess is kind of the the thing. Uh, you know, two lines of hashtags. If it really deserves it, uh, sure, you could do that if it's pretty important. But for the most part, I think what you got there, which is five, is just fine and dandy. Um, the most important thing to understand about hashtags is, is it really helps people discover your content. So, you know, your brand page when you're starting out, for instance, might only have two followers, you know, the two people that have followed you. It's you and your best friend, uh, plus the crap star. And so maybe three. <laughs> <laughs> but hashtags allow for even greater discoverability throughout the Google Plus platform and in certain cases within Google.com. For instance, you know, if, uh, if you're in front of your uh, viewers, if you're in front of your 
browsing now, if you go to google.com and you put in a search and you type hashtag shutdown for the government shutdown, right? You'll see over on the right hand side of the, of the screen live tiles that are showing posts that contain the hashtag shutdown. Uh, you could also do this with another one, which we on Google Plus use a lot, which is hashtag N as in Nancy and S as in Sam. NS, that stands for nice share. So, um, oh, I've seen yes. that. Is that what it is? Oh, <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, it's, okay. it's nice share. Um, yeah, which is what we what we do in Google Plus when we like somebody what somebody else has shared. It's very courteous to say hashtag NS basically. Um, I'll get off onto another little tangent, and that is another way of being courteous to other people on Google Plus is to use H as in Henry slash T as in Tom, and that means hat tip. So you would hat <laughs> if, if somebody has shared something, you you. you you tip your hat to them and you do a plus and their name. So again, that's just another way of being grateful on Google+. It is a completely different environment than what the other platforms we've talked about. It really is about showing respect, showing thanks, uh, showing appreciation. Um, I love it. I think it's courteous. It's for polite people. <laughs> <laughs> I like exactly. that. I was brought and up to it, well, be polite. And if you think about it, you gravitate towards, towards people usually who are nice and who are, you know, uh, who are going to treat you the same way. And that's also one of the ways that you become, um, you know, an, a, kind of an expert in authority and how you can also get closer to people who have already built up their expertise and their authority on Google+. But, you know, it's just some that we should, as people should do anyway. If we find something useful, you should definitely give credit where credit is due. I think what would be a really good part of our next session is how you find those people, and that's through the communities. Um, but it's fascinating that of what's out there and uh, the authority that's out there, the knowledge that's out there, the willingness to help that's out there, and that's how you're going to make some of these connections. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So uh, we did the hashtags, uh, length of post, uh, content to post, um, that you don't want to just spam people. What mm -hmm. happens when, because I do see people just one after the other posting items on Google Plus. What happens to those people? Uh, well, again, those are people that are always, you know, they're, they're, they're always selling people, basically. Um, those people people on G plus mostly get muted um, or ignored completely. Um, people that are on G plus are there to learn and share their experience. Of course, people are on, G on Google plus to do business at the same time. And they understand that, that takes a little bit of time to build those trust and the relationships. Um, once those relationships are built though, those people will last forever and they will broadcast your messages from the top of the mountains. So that's kind of the end goal is to get people to really want to share your knowledge and your expertise and your content. So uh, I, I say on Google Plus, don't always be selling. Um, share people, other people's content. You know, be thoughtful, um, be insightful, and where are you? Yes, you definitely want to share share your. And I think as as the, the craft star community, one of the things that you can do and one, uh, one thing I would recommend is that if you're going to be sharing something about your product is maybe do a video about how you created the product or how you found this vintage piece of art, um, you know, or maybe do a, a, a motion image, which is called auto awesome. We'll touch on that another day in Google plus that shows, you know, from beginning to end what it took to, to make the sketch. Um, or to craft, you know, a piece of jewelry, you know, do something that is a little bit just more outside the box and not just, hey, I've got this thing I want to sell you, buy it, please. That's interesting that you say that because uh, we keep going on about what we call moving pictures, which is video, um, and that's why we're starting these live sales blocks next week because uh, I think it's much easier to uh, understand an item um, when you can see it in in person or through a screen um, and it's much easier for the seller or the creator 
to get over their passion of the item. Um, and it's a great sales tool. So what you just said, what was this thing that you create? It's, uh, it's called Auto Awesome. Oh my god, oh, my head's <laughs> going to explode from all the things that Google Plus does. <laughs> auto Awesome? Are you kidding me? Auto Awesome. Uh, I'm writing just, it down. I'll, I'll just spitball it out there. Basically, if you have uh, at least six images that you have taken in succession or basically look like they should be together, then when you upload them to Google through the Google Image Editor, um, Auto Awesome will basically stitch those images together and create an animated image out of it. <laughs> so it's, it's a cool way of telling a story, actually. <laughs> okay, now, you guys, all our Craft Star friends, I hope you're understanding why we're doing this. Can you see the possibilities <laughs> of this place? Um, while you were talking about the crafting of the post and when I, when I was asking you about spammers, because um, I was thinking, is this going to get overrun by those kind of people? Hmm, but yeah. I think to appreciate and to want to spend the time in Google+, Plus, building the relationships that you need to do to be successful, you need to have a certain uh, brain set, mindset. Um, you, you're in it for the long run. You're in it to develop relationships. You're in it to learn. You're in it to try new things. You're not there just to dash and run. Right. Um, so it is attracting a different mentality, really. Yeah, I mean, and and you know, definitely, there's other benefits to it as well. I mean, you get SEO benefits out of it. Um, you know, we'll talk about social signals, but we'll talk at another time, and kind of how they can help with SEO. You know, again, everything you know shows up in search. I think at the end of the day, um, when you invest any amount of time into a social network or in this case community like Google Plus you're, you're definitely looking to get something out of it you don't want to just post pictures of what you just ate uh, um, you know or things like that mm -hmm. so <clears throat> so you know I think as long as you have those business goals and business objectives in mind then the investment of time can definitely you know, will shine through basically. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, okay, let's get back to these posts. Um, this left box here, you're plussing <laughs> yeah. the post. What is yeah. that doing? Uh, again, the plus acts as an endorsement. Um, I could get into a really technical way of explaining how plus ones kind of propagate all over the place, but let's just put it this way. Some simple things about it is, is that if I am connected to somebody and that person is connected to me and you are not connected to that person, there is a chance that some that, that person who you are not connected to might see that Bethan plus one this post. And by seeing that, they might actually want to follow you. So, um, yeah. So that, that's, that's one aspect of it. Really at its core, what you're looking at is that um, that the plus is basically an endorsement. It, it, you're plus wanting a post because you like the post. It's again, it's very similar to, similar in in me mechanism to a Facebook like. Okay, so if I plus one this, does that post show up on my feed? No. Okay. You just plus one it, and okay. it, on your profile it'll show up on your posts that you plus one basically. Okay, so this, this little arrow thing, when I do that, that shows up on my feed when I share it. Yeah, so the ability, well, it depends on where you share it to <laughs> and also your settings. But yeah, well, I mean, for the, for the basics of it, yes. So when you're sharing it, by the way, sharing is much more valuable to somebody or a brand than a plus one. Um, um, important distinction there because sharing is going to basically reach a much broader audience. So you, but you can share that post and you can share it into a community. You could share it into, say, a circle of just people who you think would be interested in just that image, for instance. You might share that into a creativity circle, you know, creativity engagers, maybe, you, you call it. Um, you know, or you can share it to public, and that means anybody who comes to your profile will see it. So, so there, there's different kind of... Um, visibility basically when you're doing that so 
when people say, you know, Google Plus is a ghost town, well, they're saying that because they don't see some of this activity. If you share that into a private circle or if you share that with one person, that doesn't show up on your public profile. Um, um, incidentally, okay. the plus one and the share both generate what's called a social signal. So, And that helps your SEO? Incorrect, indirectly. It's a causation, correct. Okay. And then adding a comment, what does that do? Um, adding a comment, you know, is also just as valuable in a sense as a share, but it only exists on that post. So, for instance, your friends won't be notified in their stream, like on Facebook, that you've commented on this post. They won't see that in their home stream. Um, what they will have, what will happen is, is that anybody who has interacted on this post will see the fact that you just commented on this post, and that might bring them back to it. So, you know, you might make a comment, um, Beth, and I'm not sure what you would comment on this post and say, but you know, you might say this is a great picture, you know, about creativity and art, you know, and related somehow to the product, um, which I can't see. So, and then somebody else who is following you might see that and they might come in and they might make a comment as well. And then you might end up with a discussion out of mm -hmm. all of that. Um, we've had, you know, with me and a lot of the, uh, our friends on, on G+, we get into these amazing, interesting, intense sometimes debates that had nothing to do with the original <laughs> post itself. I mean, and it, you know, it's this it's just, you know, it turns out being a, becoming a philosophical discussion or, or who knows what, or just sharing of expertise leads to experiments just because one person commented. <laughs> so. Well, let's hope one day you lead it to world peace. Um, <laughs> you might have the power to do that. Um, okay, I think those cover the basics of a post. And again, I will put this in writing. Um, with some examples and links uh, to help people. What I'd like to do is jump on the Craftstar website quickly um, and show that we have added Google Plus all over the place. Um, so we have Google Plus down here at the bottom here with our Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, all that. Um, but what we've done today is we've added it to each item. So you can... Um, Supposedly, there we go. Uh, you can share or you can plus one. Again, would you mind telling us the difference between the two? Well, again, the, the share action is going to be, say, sharing it on your public uh, on your public profile or, say, your brand page. Or you might share it into an actual circle uh, or you might share it into a community. Um, the plus one again is just that it's kind of like an endorsement. You know, you click the button, it's a plus one. Um, but again, that passes a social signal, which, you know, according to a lot of studies that are out there, helps with search engine ranking. Does that ha item have to be on Google Plus already for that plus one to mean anything? Um, no. Oh. Yeah, so basically the plus one in this aspect, which is on the web page itself, is an endorsement for this web page. The big difference is, is that the plus one that we were viewing previously on Google Plus is actually plus oneing the post, which is within Google Plus. So this is kind of an external plus mechanism. Anybody can plus one. That is fascinating. Okay. Um, now, I can see people thinking this is a good way to get myself out of there and going crazy. What happens if you overindulge? <laughs> overindulge in a plus? <laughs> yeah. Take too many pluses. <laughs> uh, well, let's put it this way. You, you Publicly on the web, like on your website, right? you could have, say, one user who plus ones every single page of your site. Uh, Google's pretty good at figuring out spam, and um, in that aspect, you know, they're, they're going to, uh, you know, there's no hard evidence to this, but, you know, probably uh, devalue the, the uh, pluses from that pluser. Um, one thing I will n make a, a note of is, is that if you are on, tr on somebody's brand page and you plus one every single one of their posts, 
they do get a notification every time somebody plus one something. So if you do it, say, on, oh, I don't know, 30, 40 posts, you're going to clog up that person's notification stream. Um, if you're trying to get them attention, congratulations. You've just done a good, very great job. You've got their attention. But do you <laughs> whether, get to a point where, where – but you get to a point that you're not considered um, – respected by Google? Does Google push you aside at, at, if you do it too much? I would say, again, everything in moderation. You don't want to plus one everything else, everything in the world. Uh, you only want to really plus one things that you like and that you can actually endorse. Okay, okay, that's good. I, I can see people going a bit crazy with that. Um, yeah. I think it goes back to the whole uh, ecosystem of Google Plus and the Karma Wheel and it's it's a it's a serious it's a serious place. It's a place for thoughtful people. It's a place to uh, participate, to get something out of, to put something in, not just to blast messages out the whole time. Um, this right. is the other thing I wanted to show our craft star users um, today. We've added. Uh, you, you're, you can add your Google Plus page to your home page. So um, when you're logged in and you go to uh, my profile, you can add your Twitter page, your Pinterest page, your Facebook page, and now you can also add your Google Plus. So you can follow these people uh, or follow people from their Craftstar main page, which is very handy dandy. Thank you, Tex. We love those boys. Um, okay, I think that's what we need to cover here. Now, I'm going to do the thing I hate more than anything else in the whole entire world. I'm going to go back to our screen, and I'm going to stop screen share. And nine times out of ten, I never get this right. Oh, oh my gosh, I did Yay. it. Look, look, you're good just... luck. You're fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> would, you um, like me to, uh, would you like me to go in and, and uh, before we wrap, would you like me to share some of the details, uh, the case study that we have with the Silver Diva? I would. I would love, though, to be able to um, acknowledge a couple of the questions that go we've had. It. Are you okay doing that first? Ab absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, Debbie is asking, I use um, Hootsuite to share one post to all my sites. Can I use it also to for Google Plus? The answer to that is yes, you can do that. Um, best practice, probably not awesome. So uh, what I like to recommend is, is that you actually craft an individual different message for each social platform. So if you're going to share something to Twitter, it should be different message than you share to Facebook, than you share definitely to Google+, um, because each of the platforms crafting a post is very different. Um, but yes, in short, Hootsuite does support Google brand pages. I do not believe they support personal profiles, though, at this moment. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Debbie, for that question. Um, we've got something similar here, so I'm just going to mark that as done. Um, who do you share with on Google Plus? Uh, that was via Lynn. That's something that we are going to talk to, go into in more detail on building those circles and the communities next time we have Ben pinned down to his computer with us, which I yeah, hope I will be. I, I, I could answer that really quickly, though. Oh, me, great. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks. Let me, let me definitely answer that really quickly. So I would say most of the time you're going to be posting to public. So you've got the options of basically posting to public, posting to your circles, posting if it's a profile to your extended circles. So just make sure that public is selected. If it's a message though that you have uh, that you want to send out to a very specific group of people, then you would send it out to a circle, and you could actually X off public, and it'll just go to that circle. I've got a question. I've had people message me, so it's an individual. Um, communication. Is that actually really private? Oh, yes, it absolutely or is. Or does that get seen somewhere? Or is it, it just... Is. It is, uh, but there's... What, what, private or public? Yeah, so basically, <clears throat> the way that works is is that when you're composing a message on G+, um, if you want to send, say, so if I want to send, say, you directly, but then uh, a message, I would click off of public, so I'd remove that public circle, okay, and I would go into the post and I'd type plus and then put in your name and that would show and when I, once I hit tab 
or move away from that, it's going to put just your name in the people that I'm sending it to. Now that means that I'm sharing it privately. That conversation is now just between me and you. The only time that that does not become between me and you is if you, for instance, want to bring in somebody else. So let's say we wanted to bring in Ronnie Bincer into the conversation. Now all of a sudden, we've kind of started letting the cat out of the bag because now this third person can start adding a whole bunch of other people in there too. So be very careful with your private conversations, I guess, really what I'm trying to get at. Okay, that's really interesting. And also, yes, be very uh, wary of what you send because if you sent me something that you intended for my eyes only without me realizing it was for my eyes only, I could actually think this is such an important piece of information. I need to share it with everybody else and completely Correct. screw you up. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you could share it. You could end up sharing it to public, mm -hmm. you know, um, which would not be nice. <laughs> no. Okay, so that's a courtesy thing too. That's a that's a really good important message I think, and and something to be careful about because I do I've had a couple plus ones or just uh, personal things to me that I thought this is really useful, but I thought well if they've only sent it to me then they mean it only for me, and I went and asked permission may I use this, um, yeah. and yeah. one time I got a yes and one time I got a no. A great habit is is if you want to meet somebody who you've never met before but you've been reading their posts. A great thing is is to plus just send a message, plus mention that person in that message, remove public, say, hey, you know, I've been following you for a while now. I really love how insightful or your expertise in this. You know, I'd love to get to know you. And would you mind hopping in a hangout or would you mind, you know, we swapping email addresses or something like that? Um, that's a great way to connect with people. And I mean, the success ratio on that is so high. Uh, you don't get that on other networks. Can we do a uh, match plus for singles? <laughs> if we can take advantage probably of this, could, probably could. <laughs> if we can do this if person to person messaging system, I like that idea. Okay, um, in relation to what was you just said about the one to one, we've got a lovely message here. Thank you, plus Ben Fisher. The chat rooms love you. You've got a fan base here. Um, okay, so Lynn, we answered your question. Thank you ever so much for that. Um, now we've got uh, how do you format text in post on G plus? Uh, that was from Angel. Angel, we answered that earlier when we were actually on uh, the craft no, no, day. No, we haven't no? answered that actually. No, that because we talked about the anatomy of a post. We didn't talk about the formatting of a post. What the hell is uh, the difference is between anatomy and format? <laughs> oh my god. You guys will never sleep again after this session. Oh my goodness. Oh. Basically, I mean, you, what you can do is, is when you're making a post, uh, and, and I completely understand where the question's coming from, you can add some stylized elements to a post. So you can make, for instance, certain words bold. You can make certain words italicized. Or you can make a strike through completely of the word. Uh, those are the, the only formatting options which are currently available to us. How you do that, just really quickly, is, is if you want to make something bold, you use an asterisk before the first letter and an asterisk after the last letter. The important thing is to have no punctuation in between. If you have punctuation in between, it breaks it up completely and it won't go bold, um, which is true with all the others. If you want to have it as um, italicized, then you're going to do a underscore in front of the, the first letter of the first word and an underscore at the end of the last word. And then if you want to basically strike through, you just put a dash and a dash at the end. And those are the three options that you have. You can also, this might make, make your head explode, Bethan, you can put in like um, things like smiley faces and what's called ASCII codes, which make all sorts of really cool shapes, like airplanes <laughs> and check marks and stuff like that. You know. An ASCII code? And they code? look awesome on more. Yeah, yeah, we definitely won't get into that right now. But you can do all sorts of like check boxes and numbers and things like that. Um, there's some great resources on Google Plus for it actually, where you know, there's posts that have like where you can just copy and paste them. Um, and actually, hold on one second, there is a Chrome plugin which is called Fancy 
characters. Look for that on the Google Chrome store. It's called, again, Fancy Characters, and that will also insert these really cool ASCII codes right into a post for you. So anyway, um, that's, how you but, that's how you stylize. <laughs> thank you, Ben. Thank you, Angel. Um, I would have just gone over that thinking we had already answered that, so I appreciate you sending that through. Um, can I ask you a favor, Ben? When we're done here, can you please send us, plus the Craft Star, one of these crazy weird posts with airplanes on it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> just so that we can get an idea of what you're talking about here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no we like we like to have a bit of fun. Um, <laughs> okay, so we've we've used up the hour. Um, I think and I hope that's given you guys a really good basic overview of uh, and and an idea of how breathtaking uh, Google Plus is. Um, but I think we covered the A, B's, and C's, and you're on your way to being um, able to start your page and get moving on it. Uh, we will post the link to this broadcast onto our Google Plus page and our Facebook page. I will do a uh, document with some links on it that will help you uh, learn more about the basics of it. And then what I would really love to touch on are a couple things next time you come, which you've mentioned. Um, which are social signals. Um, I'd love to get in more in depth mm -hmm. on that. Um, I'd love to go into communities more because those have been just such a, uh, it's like a fairyland for me. They're just amazing. Um, and I would love to go into uh, video and how our sellers should be using what I call moving pictures, what you call video, uh, more and more. Are those three good right things to take as the next step? I think so, most definitely. You know, um, I think one thing though that I'd like to to share, and that's um, some real world results. Right. Return on investment, um, because at the end of the day, we're all here as part of the Craft Star Network. We're here to, or just small business in general. We're here to make money. We're here to make sales. Um, and I just want to sh share a very quick story of a success story that we, that we have, a uh, case study. We work with uh, Chris, Chris Barbie, and she has a crafting company. She makes silver necklaces or silver pendants and such. Um, and the only thing she is spending money on to advertise is on Google+. Um, she's using some of the big boys that uh, we all know and she's trying to get away from the big boys and kind of stand more on her own and make more sales by herself um, using mechanisms like the craft star for instance so but just really quickly about results she's been doing Google Plus now for a couple months and if we look at the same period of sales from last year compared to this year She's had an amazing, astonishing growth, 45% growth in sales since she started getting active and engaging on Google+. Plus. Amazing. Um, her conversion ratio on her website has gone up over 76%. Her average revenue for, for sale has gone over up over 3%. Goal conversion ratios over 70%. Uh, users on site, the average number of pages that they're looking at, up 24%. Time on site, and we see this across the board on Google Plus activity, up 31%. Um, so those are just some real world numbers that you can think of when you think about time, money, energy into Google Plus. And, you know, the answer um, is yes it can have a real impact on your business. So for our small businesses, um, would, so you, we'll talk about this I think next time as well. You run a business that, uh, that basically runs a Google Plus page for somebody. Um, right. As small businesses on the Craft Star, would hiring your services build the traffic for those small businesses and then the Craft Star overall? 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, I think we've talked about a couple of different ways that could be done. But yes, um, Steady Demand, uh, the company that, that I'm with, uh, that I founded and co-founded, we do brand page management for companies, uh, for small businesses. And we always you know, looked at the business objectives. But yes, most definitely. I mean, if you're talking about a brand page and that was connected to, say, a somehow to the craft star, like a subdomain or something like that, then absolutely it would have help the crowd, it would help the brand at the same time. Okay, I think we should talk about this uh, in more detail offline and then figure out ways that it can benefit our users uh, online. Um, so thank you ever so much, Ben. You've, you've been amazing, you've been very succinct, and you've been very easy to understand and what I like to call Barbie speak. Um, if I can, if I can understand it in Barbie speak, then we're good. <laughs> and it's a lot to take in. I mean, this thing is just incredible. It never ends. I literally, Ben and I had a, a meeting um, set up on Saturday for 30 minutes. I, we ended up talking for almost three hours. That was Saturday. We finished like at two. I went to bed at four o'clock that morning. I never go to bed that late. I just could not get off Google Plus because everywhere you turned, it was like another rabbit hole opened up with even more amazing things in it. Um, I mean, what Ben has talked about today is just the very, very basics uh, to get you going. And um, I'm so excited about the the possibilities we've got here. So um, if we, sorry. You know, I was going to say, you know, Beth, and one thing I would I would encourage everybody that, that is listening to this the broadcast and is still has a question in their mind whether Google Plus is right for them or not, I say take the 30-day challenge, 30 minutes for 30 days, hang out on Google+, join communities, engage. And you know what? After 30 days, if you still don't like it, you don't have to look back. <laughs> That's a great idea. I like that. We should maybe actually do that as a challenge for our shops and the most successful yeah. win something. I think that's a great idea. Okay. I'll get the girls working on that. Um, okay, so I want to thank you again. You've been incredibly gracious with your time, and um, I'm going to beg you to come back again next week. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Put Thanks you on the spot so you can't say no. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, Thanks. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. We will put the recording of this up. Um, I would like to remind you that shopping small businesses helps families directly, and we'd love you to take a look at thecraftstore.com for your holiday shopping. Um, we will be back live on Monday for our live hangout where we're going to be launching new features. We've got some more fun stuff uh, lined up for you that's going to be ready to launch on Monday. And uh, then on Wednesday, dun, 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 the live sales start. So we have the first three weeks, maybe even four weeks booked in now. Um, so uh, we are raring to go. And we've actually found a lay-on to what we use here to make it even easier for me as a host and person running the desk at the same time, um, which is I discovered last night, which blew my mind even more. And the things that we can do with that are just incredible. So I'm so looking forward to playing with that. Um, so we've got a busy week next week. And uh, yeah, Ben, I'll talk to you about trying to get you in on Thursday again. <laughs> Sounds good. Have a good night and have All a great right, weekend. Everybody. Thank you so much. Everybody. Okay. Bye. All right, guys. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you back here on Monday. If you've got any questions, you can email me anytime. You know that. It's Bethan, B-E-T-H-A-N, at thecraftstar.com, um, and go get your Google Plus pages set up. Um, and let's get working this because we've got a great opportunity here. Uh, we just learned some amazing tips and tricks on how to build your business. Let's put those into practice, and let's stand out from the bunch because the other people aren't doing it. Um, or at least I'm not doing it right. So let's get in there. Okay, we'll see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Thanks.